Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today um, this is kind of a very different video from what I typically do. Um, this isn't a movie review or any kind of like big discussion. Um, in this video, as the title says, um, I'm going to be discussing about, well, who I'm voting for for the upcoming U.S. presidential election, which, at least from the, make, from the time of this video, um, today is October 25th. It is about a week and a half away. Um, so first, before we get into it, um, I'll go over kind of like four of the issues, four of the main issues that are at least are about this election, and at least that really are important to me. And then I will tell who I who I think which of the candidates will be the one that might actually be able to do something about these issues. Um, and I mean, before I like really get into it, you know, I mean, this whole, you know, you guys may not like my opinions on these issues, or you might not like who I want to, I'm planning on voting, you know, but this is my, pretty purely my opinion, you know, you guys are entitled to any of your own opinions about who you should vote for, and I mean, yeah, so, I guess a little disclaimer, if you don't like who I who I'm into, you know, it is what it is, this is my opinion, and, uh, yeah, but anyway, um, let's get into the four main issues that, at least that are affecting the United States, and somewhat the world, too, that I feel are most important about this election. So, number one, war. You know, for the past two years, you know, at least I should say, Right now, with the United States, we are in the middle of two wars. I know there's a lot of stuff going on at home with this election, but don't forget, we were involved in two wars abroad. You know, by, at least by proxy right now. Right now. You know, the war with, in, between Ukraine and Russia, and the war with Israel, and at this point I should say Israel versus the whole Iran. You know, and these wars there, instead of... Now, while we're not directly involved yet, they're continuously like getting worse and worse. You know, we're in right now in Ukraine. We're fighting inside of Russia, and well, it seems like any day Iran and Israel are really going to go head to head. And there really doesn't seem to be any real good solution or anyone here in the U.S. trying to stop these wars from escalating possibly into World War Three. Especially the war with Russia, you know, which very much could likely end in the event of a nuclear bomb being launched, which, well... Nearly resulted in the total destruction of, well, everything. Hate to break it to you, it would kind of re result, in, would result in the death of everyone here on Earth if that really were to happen. So, yeah, like, one thing I really am concerned about is, well this whole, all these wars, you know, trying to stop all these smaller proxy wars be, becoming in, becoming World War III. Um, so that is one of my issues that I have. Issue number two, and I think this is an issue that many people across the country are feeling and actually do have a real issue about immigration. Here's the thing. The idea that our border is secure has got to be the stupidest statement I've ever seen. You know, it is so difficult. You know, before I get into this, I'm not anti-immigration. I'd say most people are not anti-immigration. You know, this country was founded by immigrants. But here's the thing. They had a legal, smooth, smoother way into, to become from, going from wherever they came from to citizenship. Whereas, he, now we have... Legal, people that are trying to come here legally are, it's super difficult for them, but meanwhile, if you come through the border, you know, through our wide open southern border, you get free everything, shipped off to who knows where, and you get so much things, like the video, you know, all the videos that are out there, they're not, they're not all fake, they can't all be fake, and as well, the fact that we have a wide open border, where not only people that do want to come here to try to have a better life, but also very dangerous people, criminals, gangs, terrorists, 
who knows, can just walk in here and cause trouble. And new at 10, it's scenes coming out of a movie as the Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua are seen breaking into apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado. This is according to our sister station in Denver. There you can see the group well armed and forcing an apartment door open and making their way in. This has raised concerns amongst residents and Colorado state law enforcement officials. The city of Aurora is issuing a statement today in the wake of national attention following the video's release. As we've reported in the past, Tren de Aragua is one of the fastest growing transnational criminal organizations from Venezuela. According to FBI officials, the gang has now infiltrated its way into the United States through various sectors of the U.S.-Mexico border. You know, that's quite concerning. And the fact that, you know, there are so many people that don't care and don't, you know, that don't, and that if you say anything, they say you're racist or terrible, that's kind of a, it's a little bit ridiculous, you know. We kind of need to get that under control and actually have something of an immigration plan for people that do want to come here legally and actually be a benefit to the United States. That's my opinion on that. Number three, um, the cost of living. So as some of you know, I'm, I'm a um, graduating college senior. I'm about to graduate in May of next year. I'm about to go out into the world and truly, you know, get in, start working and trying to support myself. As it stands right now, that's really difficult. You know, everything is so expensive. Everything, food, living, housing, anything. Like, there's no doubt, like, it's really difficult for someone that doesn't have a lot of money, like me, to really afford, you know, much of anything. You know, so really, I would really like the cost of living and everything to go down. And as well, also kind of tying into that, how about our national debt being paid off? Like, does everyone kind of forget that our government owes $36 trillion and counting? Just saying. Um, and the fourth issue, it is, well, how about protecting our rights? You know, I don't know whether you have seen it lately, but there have been many politicians and social media companies and all just people in power that have said that lately that disinformation is a great big threat to democracy. You know, there's a lot of discussion now about how you curb uh, those entities. Uh, in order to guarantee that you're going to have, you know, some accountability on facts, et cetera. But look, if people go to only one source and the source they go to is sick and, uh, you know, has an agenda and they're putting out disinformation, uh, our First Amendment stands as a major block to the ability to be able to just, you know, hammer it out of existence. And, well, here's the thing. Disinformation still is allowed. You know, our First Amendment here in the United States, it allows all free speech to be legal. Doesn't matter how good, bad, wrong, right or wrong or stupid, if you have something to say, you have a right to say it. And if anyone pulls it or says that you can't do that, well, that's illegal. So the fact that there are people that are trying to stop this and change the First Amendment that should be quite concerning, and that should be something that people should try to stop. So yeah, that, those are my four main issues for this upcoming election. And let me go into who I think the person of the candidates that will actually try to do something about these issues is. So here is, well, I'm not going to, how about, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to say it myself who is, but... This video will show you who it is. But what happened last week when they took a shot at my hero? And they tried to kill the next president of the United States. Enough was enough. And I said, let trump -mania run wild, brother. Let trump -mania rule again. 
let Trumpomania make America great again. So yeah, I am voting for Donald Trump. So for those of you that are now going to be freaking out like, oh my God, he's voting for Trump. Here's the thing. With whatever you your opinion of Trump is, that he is who I'm voting for. Like me, hate me, hell, you can even unsubscribe. I don't care. Trump is the person that I think, and quite a few people think, can do it. We'll be able to hopefully make some real change and just, you know, be able to do something about all these issues and many and many more issues that I didn't even bring up. While he has challenged the swamp creatures in Washington, all of you have resoundingly nominated him for president three times in the last three presidential elections. We know whose side he stands on. He stands on the side of the people. He stands on the side of peace and prosperity and freedom for all Americans. It's why I'm proud to stand with President Trump and why we, the people, must vote to send him back to the White House and make America great again. You know, for all you Kamala voters out there, you know, I, you know, I just don't think... I seriously don't think Kamala will do much about any of these issues, and if anything, might even make them worse. You know, I just think Trump is the person that will be able to hopefully do something about these 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 issues. And uh, yeah, you know, that is my opinion. That is who I'm voting for for the 2024 election. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna end this video off right here. Um, tell me who, if you want, who you're planning on voting for, or who, or if, even if you're not able to vote, like who, the can, which candidate you think is gonna be better. You know, if you liked the video, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. It's over.